Today's guest is Lyle Allen. He's an experienced vice president in the industrial and consumer goods industry. So Lyle, thank you, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Tats. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. So um, you've spent a lot of time in the sales uh, realm. Um, was was that originally the plan, um, going into sales, or you just kind of uh, fell into it? Never had any ambition in going into sales uh, that I that I'm aware of, but I just kind of fell into it. I think uh, I I started selling with my uh, my grandpa uh, and grandmother at the sale barn when I was like seven eight years old, and uh, and didn't realize uh, that uh, it was going to be a, a lifelong career. Yeah, yeah. So, so, um, so there was early signs that you might be good at this. I well, I guess um, it, it seemed to work. Uh, it had the uh, the ability to chat with people and and get to know them and understand what they're uh, looking for, and and then trying to help them out and see if we had it or not. Yeah, tell me, tell me about your uh, early early roles in sales. Well, yeah, I've. Uh, I, <laughs> I was a route driver way back in the day uh, with a with a linen company, and um, and then uh, but really in my on my professional side, uh, starting in the coatings industry uh, back in Las Vegas, uh, wor- working for a, a maintenance supply house and selling coatings to the uh, uh, multifamily housing and uh, hotels and casinos out in Las Vegas. And uh, selling anywhere from light bulbs uh, to the paint coatings, um, and uh, that was a very interesting and valuable learning experience for sure. When you say interesting, there must be stories. Uh, can you can you share any of them? You know, it's just uh, I'll say it, it, it's still or at that time it was still a a city of connections, uh, which I think in life uh, it's it's all about connections, but. Um, uh, I started a uh, a sales position um, and it was commission and it was really uh, difficult. I was not from the Vegas area and it was really uh, uh, difficult to get in uh, to, for these multifamily housing and business uh, managers to allow me let my foot in the door. And, uh, and then once I finally broke down that barrier, got to uh, know uh, a couple of them, they kept recommending me and referring me to the next uh, uh, development and uh, and it it turned out to be a pretty good thing and uh, we uh, and it just it just kind of progressed from there. Um, yeah. Starting um, uh, just uh, you just you have you have to have an open mind. You never know where it's going to lead you. <laughs> now, w- when you said you, you finally broke through, did did you do anything special or just fundamental in terms of follow up, politeness, and 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 stuff like that? That was it. Uh, the ABCs of selling really is uh, listening uh, to what they actually were saying to me and not just taking it as a rejection, but understanding that, you know, whether it was uh, people that wanted you to set appointments and not just show up because a lot of my side was cold, cold calling and or uh, finding out maybe talking to other people on the on the property or at the business to find out what some of their problems were and then going to that decision maker and understanding that you had a solution for those problems. Um, but uh, trying to get to know the customer and learning what difficulties they were up against, that allowed me to um, provide them a, a solution. And then once they saw me as a resource, then when when they had a problem, the phone would ring. And that was that's when I knew I was on the right path. Wonderful. And as you were progressing through your uh, career, you know, how did your role and and your involvement evolve? Well, uh, you know, as far as sales, uh, that uh, I took a territory, and I just uh, being consistent, I guess, uh, was uh, my claim to fame. <laughs> um, uh, people like consistency. And so when they knew that I was going to show up and they knew what to expect from me, that I, I wasn't a guy that overpromised and underdelivered, um, then uh, they started taking time out to see me. And then I was able to prove myself through those sales, uh, which uh, caught the uh, manager's attention 
and uh, allowed me to progress up through the ranks uh, over the years. Yeah. And, so yeah. you say consistent. Give, give me an example. What, what are we talking about until consistency? Because I know different people use use words in different ways. So what is consistency to you in the sales process? Well, if I am, if I've got a relationship with someone and that's, that, that's really how I, I view everything, regardless of what level you're at. Uh, when you're dealing with a customer, you're trying to create that relationship and a, and a partnership, if you will. And so uh, establishing that consistency where they, they trusted me and they knew that I had their best interest in mind. I was trying to help. I wasn't trying just to get the sale. Uh, that created that level of trust that you have to have in sales. Um, uh, if they if they don't trust you, uh, you're you're spinning your wheels. Um, a lot of people are uh, use the fancy words and and they're only interested in the sale. Um, and uh, uh, the customers can realize as well as my managers that that I was consistent in uh, it, providing the sales and or following through with any. Uh, specific tasks that were going on uh, that needed to be done. Yeah, for sure. Now, so when you came to Rustolium, you know, I see Nationals uh, Director of Sales. You know, uh, did your role substantially change when you when you moved into that position? Uh, look, more responsibilities, a, a few more people. Um, it was um, uh, when we first started under Rust, the Rust-Oleum umbrella. That was, uh, uh, they really didn't have a professional paint uh, side of the business. And that's where I fit the niche um, coming from Zinser, which was a sister company of Rust-Oleum. And so we, uh, we developed and grew that professional side of the business. And, and then as director, uh, we started uh, with Rust-Oleum, as you know, I have a lot of acquisitions over the years. And uh, with that role, uh, through those acquisitions, we created additional teams and just kept bolting on uh, additional salespeople or, or flooring categories, uh, roofing categories, uh, architect, architect and engineering team. Um, and uh, that was uh, the, the additional responsibility. Uh, I think when we came from Zenzer, we had like uh, maybe 20 uh, sales guys, probably a little less than that. And then through uh, Stolen, whenever I left, uh, we were uh, uh, over 50 plus people uh, for the for the nation. Yeah, for sure. Now, um, when, when you said um, pr- professional side, I mean, is, is, there, is there a playbook that you have to, to uh, sort of um, grow that out? Or is it just, you know, um, pretty straightforward? No, I mean, it, it can be as straightforward as you want it to be, uh, but uh, you have to understand, again, going back to understanding the customer and what their, their everyday problems are. And um, with uh, Rust-Oleum being the codings company that they are, uh, we, we were able to solve a lot of problems. And uh, uh, through, you know, whether it was primer issues, uh, uh, problematic substrates, um, uh, mold, mildew, uh, you, you name it, and we, we pretty much had a, a solution. And so understanding the customer that you were going after uh, was key to what solutions, what problems you could solve for them. Yeah, for sure. Now, uh, were you involved in the acquisition side or just more of the integration side? Uh, no, we, I was part of the, the acquisition team, um, primarily uh, once we would acquire a company. Um, we would go through the, the personnel and depending on what side of the business they fell, uh, a lot of um, our growth came from uh, some of the, those acquisitions uh, to my team. We'd take certain salespeople or category people and, and uh, bolt them onto our team and might go in a totally different direction. Flooring was one of those uh, uh, specifically that uh, most only we needed a, a good flooring team and we were able to build one. Uh, out of an acquisition, uh, Sealcrete, um, and it's uh, d- thriving well today. Yeah, for sure. Now, um, y- you talk, I-, I think, a lot about leadership and you know what what is required to be successful. What are the things that you go to that are uh, the fundamentals? 
Well, uh, you know, as far as when hiring, is that what you're uh, sure? We'll start with hiring or? and then just, okay. just talk the role itself. Yeah. Um, when uh, what we, what I always look for is just one, just the the passion uh, that a, that a person has. Um, uh, can they carry on a conversation? Uh, they don't have to be a flash in the pan. Uh, and, but they have to be able to hold a, a conversation and, and see if they're, they're actually present in the conversation. Uh, I'm sure you've come across it many times where you're talking to someone, but you're not sure if they're actually listening to you. They're only thinking about what you have, what they're going to say next. And, and so if they can actually uh, digest and listen and carry on that conversation to understand what the role is, uh, and they have a passion for selling and almost more of a passion for helping. Um, that's uh, primarily what I'm looking for. Um, you know, building a sales team, you want it to be, I've heard people say, well, I'd take an army of guys just like this. I, I understand that because they're bragging on the individual, but uh, uh, that would be, you need the diversity. Uh, everyone brings something different to the table and uh, I, I don't want the, the one person that are a team of only go-getters. All right. We've got to have some people uh, that, that can actually sit back and strategize. Whereas that one person that goes out there and just goes, well, that's great. But sometimes they create more issues than they uh, solve uh, sales. And so uh, it's good to have the diversity of the team. And so I'm always trying to do a uh, look at what what does this person or what can this person add to the team that we already have? Because mm. the team the team is what we're going for, not just the the one person to be in the spotlight all the time. Yeah. So how do you balance? I mean, sales at at at, at base level is individual, uh, you know, performance. How do you bridge that and get people to work together as a team? Well, companies, uh, all companies are structured differently, um, As for, but uh, when you have the individual goals that they're always trying to uh, uh, to meet their sales goals, and that's their personal performance, but then we have, a, there's always a goal for a team performance as well, um, and make sure, and then that way, it's, they understand that together we win. Um, if it's, if you're the only one uh, having a job with the company is, is, is great. And if you're only benefiting yourself and not the team or the company, well, then that job might not be there for very long if you're making some bad decisions. So, or only trying to benefit yourself. So that's, uh, uh, you tie the goals in where uh, everybody's pulling together in the same direction and you know, the strategy, uh, they know the strategy and, uh, uh, and work together to, to achieve it. Yeah. Yeah. So is, was compensation tied together or just ex, uh, clarity of expectation on, you know, the different types of individual and, and team goals? Yeah, it was, the, the compensation was different. We had a, a separate team package, I guess, of, uh, of what we were trying to, uh, as additional uh, abilities to, to earn. And so, uh, and those were called MBOs, management by objectives. And so we always felt that if we were doing these things as a group, it was going to benefit us long term as the, the sales strategy might be short term for just you're just trying to make uh, your bonus for that year or that quarter. Uh, but we know if you do these core issues, this is going to be good for our business long term. Got it. Makes sense. So let, let's go to. Oh, Let's go to, um, you know, how do you approach recruiting and bringing, attracting the right salespeople into sort of your, your talent funnel? Sure. Well, a lot of it comes through those relationships that we've built with our customer base. And uh, a lot of uh, our, our best salespeople came from our customers. And, uh, uh, and that can be touchy from time to time uh, because they don't want you hiring from from them uh, but at the same time it, I would say almost a hundred percent of the time when they realized it was going to benefit the individual that it was the best move for them uh, then they were more than happy and very supportive but uh, yeah in the, in the codings industry you you want to have uh, people that know uh, the codings inside and out 
and uh, your customers are going to be the best resource. Yeah, for sure. Now, so now let's go to um, leadership in your role. I mean, what what you try to do day in and day out. How do you view that? What do you focus on? Uh, which which sort of keeps you on track? Well, you you've got to know your people. Uh, I guess number one. I mean, that's uh, it, it goes back to that team. Everybody has a role, uh, and you need to know how to use. Uh, each one of those roles to 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 meet your goals. So trying to uh, trying to uh, get to know the the salespeople individually and what motivates them. That's probably the first step. Um, and just again, see if these these folks are only uh, truly want to be part of the, a team, and then making sure that they trust that you're going to support them, giving them the tools that they need or giving them the guidance or helping them to develop the strategy that you're not just there to tell them what needs to be done, mm -hmm. that you're actually there to help them when they they're in a difficult situation um, and, um, and strategize about it. And once they typically, once they realize that you're, you're invested in them as much as they are invested in you, then uh, it, it, it goes really well. Yeah. So if you look at the coatings construction or the, the building materials uh, industry. I mean, do you do you know of any you know um, uh, sort of challenges or trends that are you know you find important going forward? Well, right now, just through the uh, supply chain issues, uh, whoever figures at that out is going to win. Um, <laughs> and I think everybody's in the same boat. But I think you're going to see. Um, uh, the folks, the, the companies that have not managed this well. Um, there are some that are doing really well uh, and there's others that are not and they, they're going to struggle. Um, uh, understanding their customers, how they've been able to supply them during this time period or haven't been able to supply them is going to, I think it's going to leave a mark because there's some, there's some companies out there that have done a really good job at maintaining their supply issues. Mm, yeah. For sure. Okay. Well, um, I mean, in, you know, you've had different mentors over the years. I mean, what, what are some of the, the best pieces of advice that uh, you've gotten from people? Well, I think probably not to, to put too much pressure on yourself. Um, I understand that the big picture, where you're wanting to go. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, the, you know, if you're enjoying what you're doing and you're then don't put too much pressure on yourself, go home. You're going to have to have a home life. Um, and, and I'd say that's, that's, that's key because you can find yourself. I know I found myself uh, in a spot where you're, you know, you're putting in 15 hours a day uh, and every day. And then you're finding yourself down in the basement in the office, uh, trying to do things uh, just before dinner or after dinner uh and uh it's it'll all be there tomorrow it really will and that's that's probably one of the um uh, it's easier said than done because you uh, go back to passion people really want to that are passionate about what they're doing and uh they don't think of it as work they just say hey i need to get this done for this individual and, and it's an it's more of an obligation and uh, um, but I, I would say that's number one that's always stood out to me is that you, you got to take back up and take time for yourself and your family yeah so uh taking time for yourself what does that mean to you um what hobbies or, or things do you do when you uh um, sort of step away well uh, we uh we we have a little land uh farm uh, that we go to and um and that's uh that's nice it's only about three hours from uh where we live here in st louis and we spend a lot of time down there um and that's enjoyable because it's you don't have great internet connection uh don't great don't have great cell service there uh and so you're just there and, and able to enjoy it and spend the time with the people that you that you care most about yeah absolutely um is there anything that i did not um ask you uh but you wanted to speak to uh no i don't i don't know that uh, i have any questions or anything that you uh that you missed um uh, i think we're good <laughs> all right well lyle thank you for sharing all right tats i've enjoyed it thank you so much